Good evening and thank you for joining us this evening for our city council meeting. We'll go ahead and get started. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Bray? Here. Gina? Here. Laura? Here. Mansfield? Here. Ortega? Here. Stevens? Here. Black? Here. If you'd please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, after which if you'd remain standing for an invocation, which will be offered by Randy Robinson, representing HS Joshua Ministries. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, I'm standing in for Marianne tonight with H.S. Yeshua, so I just want to pray over the so council members and mayor. Lord, I just lift up this time to you. You are in charge of this city and you are in charge of this meeting. Lord, you love Pocatello. So I just ask that you be with these people as they are making decisions for our city, Lord, that you give them wisdom and discernment. And I pray peace over this room, peace over this council. And I just thank you and praise you for what you're going to do and what you're already doing in our city. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. We'll move to agenda item number three is the consent agenda. The following business items may be approved by one motion and a vote. If any one member of the council so desires any matter listed can be moved to a separate agenda item. A, minutes. Council may wish to waive the oral reading of the minutes and approve the minutes from the following meetings. City Council work session of March 10, 2022. City Council liaison work session clarification meetings of March 17, 2022. Clarification and regular council meeting of May 5, 2022 and May 19, 2022. B, material claims. Council may wish to consider material claims for the period of June 1, 2022 through June 10, 2022. C, treasurer's report. Council may wish to consider the treasurer's report for April 2022 showing cash and investments as of April 30, 2022. D, historic preservation commission appointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's appointment of James Young to serve as a member of the Historic Preservation Commission, replacing Elizabeth Four, who resigned. Term to begin June 17, 2022 and expire November 20, 2023. E, Library Board of Trustees appointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's appointment of Sean Yardley to serve as a member of the Library Board of Trustees, replacing Sharon Manning, whose term expired. Term to begin July 2nd, 2022 and expire July 1, 2027. F, Library Board of Trustees reappointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Sarah Shropshire to continue serving on the Library Board of Trustees. Sandra's term, Sandra's term will, be, will begin July 1, 2022 and will expire July 1, 2027. G, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board reappointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Frederick Blazer to continue serving on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Frederick's term will begin July 8, 2022 and will expire July 8, 2024. H, Council Decision Creekside District Division 2 Subdivision Short Plat Approval. Council may wish to adopt this decision approving a short plat for Creekside Division, District Division 2 Subdivision, which subdivides approximately 2.31 acres of land located at 1625 Pocatello Creek Road into two lots subject to conditions. Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that all consent agenda items with the exception of item C be approved and that I, I thought it was item C. Is it B oh, or C? Oh, oh, material sorry. claims You're B. right. Items uh, with the exception of B be approved and that B be set aside for separate discussion. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Laura? Yes. Mansell? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. We have a item B, the material claims in front of you. Um. Okay. I, I just wanted to point out on pages 13 and 14, um, the city has had opportunities in the past with both uh, uh, wind turbines and with solar panels to move forward and to uh, find a way to, to uh, produce its own electricity. I just want to note that we're spending $158,000 in the last month 
And uh, uh, we, that's probably a light month because uh, we're not running heaters or coolers like we do in other months. So I would say that we probably have at least $2 million annually that uh, we could redirect if we were to choose to do solar and, or to do wind power. And uh, I know that at one time it was a seven year payback to have seven um, wind turbines installed up on City Creek. Okay. I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I don't know who to ask. I would have sent an email, but there's on page 14, there's an, uh, an item at, towards the bottom. It says, um, ITD impound 2019 Dodge Ram, $3,455.64. You I know ask, what that is? I asked for an answer about that earlier today. Uh, there was a vehicle that was impounded, and that payment, the way the system for an abandoned vehicle works, is we don't get to keep any of the money when that vehicle is sold. The money goes back to people who are involved in the impound process, and this part of this is for transferring the title through ITD and the services that they provided. The police department got, what was it, Chief, $54? Is what the city netted out of that entire transaction. It's a broken system. Okay, thank you for okay. that. Any other questions? Okay, council, we've got B to consider. I move that we approve item B. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Laura? Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Ortega? No. Stevens? No. Okay, thank you. We'll move to agenda item number four is calendar review. Council may wish to take this opportunity to inform other council members of upcoming meetings and events that should be called to their attention. On June 30th, 9 a.m., City Council budget meeting. July 7, clarification meeting at 5.30 p.m., a regular council meeting at 6 p.m. June 17th, Pokey Paddle, 4 to 7 p.m. at Rainy Centennial Park. June 19, Father's Day at the Zoo. Fathers will receive a 50% discount off their admission when accompanied by a paid child. City offices will be closed for the following days, Monday, June 20, in observation, uh, observance of the Juneteenth holiday, Monday, July 4, in observance of Independence Day. Garbage and recycle services will operate as scheduled. Ross Park Band Concerts on Sunday evenings from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m begin June 26th and continues through the month of July. July 4, Independence Day Parade begins at 9.30 a.m. in historic downtown Pocatello. And July 4, celebration activities and firework display will be held at the Bannock County Event Center and Portniff Wellness, Wellness Complex. So do you have to pay admission for the child or just pay them to come with you? <laughs> Maybe just pay them to come with you, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, if you have any questions, call the zoo. <laughs> okay, we'll move to agenda item five, a final plat application, Northgate District Division Two. Council may wish to consider a request by Ken Poppy, represented by Creek Hollow and Associates, for a final plat to be known as Northgate District Division Two. The proposal calls for the platting of 19.5 acres, more or less, into 14 lots. Following a public hearing, the Planning and Zoning Commission determined that the proposal was compliant with all applicable standards of city code with conditions. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilman, Council President Cheatham. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of agenda item number five, the final plat application for the Northgate District Division Two, as submitted. Second. We have a motion by yes. Cheatham and a second by Lurick. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Condition. As submitted. Yes. Yes. Ray? I got a question. We got a question. For Rick. Rick. If, if we approve as submitted, are we saying as submitted on our agenda or as they submit? Submitted here. Okay. Under our consideration. Okay. Right. Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item six, final plat application, Wright Townhomes subdivision. Council may wish to consider a request by Taylor Wood, represented by Summit Land Surveying, for a final plat to be known as Wright Townhomes. The proposed subdivision is a replat of Lot 7 and Lot 12, Block 3, Ward Park subdivision. Following pub 
public hearing, the Planning and Zoning Commission determined that the proposal was compliant with all applicable standards of city codes with conditions. <coughs> Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I approve that we approve the final plat application of Wright Townhomes subdivision subject to all the conditions that are outlined. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the vote? Hold on. Mr. Mayor, I was really surprised that such a tiny lot qualifies for this many different housing units. It, it, it surprised me when I read that. Just a comment. Thank you. Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Lorick? Yes. Hensville? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Seaman? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item seven, grant application marathon community investment group. Council may wish to approve a submission of a grant application to Marathon Community Investment Programs in the amount of $20,000 subject to legal department review. If awarded, Council may wish to authorize acceptance of the grant and authorize the mayor's signature on all uh, pertinent documents related to the grant subject to legal department review. Grant funds will be used to support river access improvements north of Interstate 86. There is no city match. Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve this grant application for Marathon Community Investment Program. And if it's awarded, I uh, would uh, stipulate that we authorize the acceptance of the grant and that you can sign all pertinent documents related to the grant subject to legal department review. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Ortega. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Lorick? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 8, 8A, an ordinance approving an amending amendment of the fiscal year 2022 <coughs> appropriations ordinance, increasing the total fiscal year expenditures by $6,680,376 to account for additional revenues, including grant funds received by the city and to use previously unappropriated cash balance for unanticipated expenses occurred by the city. Council, how do you wish this ordinance to be read? Councilman Cheatham. Mr. Mayor, I move the ordinance agenda item number 8A be read only by title and placed on passage for publication that the entire ordinance summary sheet be submitted for publication. Second. We have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Lurick. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Bray? Yes. Manso? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Richard, could you, Rich, could you please read that? I know. God, I got formal wow. there. <laughs> you're, in, you're in trouble is what happened here. Could you please read the ordinance? I'm just glad you didn't say my middle name. Uh, almost All right. did. <laughs> Name. Yes, Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Pocatello, a municipal corporation of Idaho, amending ordinance number 3076. The appropriation ordinance for the fiscal period October 1, 2021 through September 30, 2022, providing for an increase in expenditures in the following funds. General Fund, Parks and Recreation, RPAC, Science and Environment Inf Information Technologies, Public Works, Street, Federal Aid Projects, Public Works, ARPA Grant and Parks and Recreation slash Zoo Improvement Trust, which increases the total fiscal expenditure by $6,680,376, providing that the revenue to pay for said increases shall be derived from grants, unexpected revenue, and the previously unappro unappropriated cash balances, providing that all other portions of the appropriation ordinance number 3076 and the ordinance number 3086 shall remain in full force and effect, providing that this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage, approval, and publication according to the law. I declare that to be the final reading of the ordinance. Shall the ordinance pass? Gray? Yes. Cheetah? Yes. Lurid? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you, agenda item 8B, an ordinance amending section 15.10.120 of the fireworks regulation ordinance to modify the minimum age for individuals permitted to work at and or super and to supervise fireworks stands. Council, how do you wish this ordinance to be read? Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that the ordinance agenda item number 8B be read only by title and placed on final passage for publication and that only the ordinance summary sheet be submitted for publication. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. 
Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Rich, could you please read the ordinance? Yes, Mayor. An ordinance of the city of Pocatello, a municipal, uh, excuse me, a municipal corporation of Idaho, amending chapters 15.10 fireworks regulations of the revised and compiled ordinance of the city of Pocatello in 1983. More particularly by amending chapters 15.10.120, sale only at temporary fireworks stands to modify the minimum age for individuals permitted to work at fireworks stands, providing that this ordinance and the provisions contained here and established pursuant to this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage, approval, and publication according to law. I declare that to be the final reading of the ordinance. Shall the ordinance pass? Frey? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Lorick? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Uh, Council, we have nobody that has signed up for agenda item nine. So with that, thank you very much for the 16 minutes you spent with us tonight. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>